for us to welcome Brigadier General Chuck Yeager. And Chuck, Chuck Yeager's life was portrayed in the movie and the book, The Right Stuff. Back in 1947, even though the day before he had broken a rib, he got on board the Bell X-1 and broke what was then called the sound barrier. After he finished, it was not a barrier anymore. He took it up to Mach 1.05. That airplane is now in the National Air and Space Museum in Washington. Please give a warm welcome to a true American legend and hero, Brigadier General Chuck Yeager. Hey, you're cutting into my two-hour talk here. So. It is really a pleasure to be here seeing a bunch of really young, eager, that smiling faces that make me feel almost 70 years younger. <laughs> I, like you, uh, enjoyed school. I graduated from high school in 1941, went straight into the Army Air Corps, and people ask me, why did you go in the Army Air Corps? And I say, probably because a recruiter, recruiter was better than the Navy recruiter. Uh, everything that I learned in the Army Air Corps, the Air Force taught me. And one thing that I was raised by my parents in, in West Virginia, and the thing that they drilled into me was to honor my flag and my country. And that pretty well governed That pretty well governed my actions uh, for the next 60 years in Air Force cockpits. I went through flying school in 1942, got my wings, got to be a fighter pilot, was sent to Europe in the first must Mustangs that fought against the Germans. The Mustang was a wonderful fighter, had eight hours of endurance. We could escort the bombers all the way to Target and Bach, back and fight German fighters. I ended up over the next uh, 17 months or so shooting down 13 Germans and just to show that I wasn't so hot I got shot down too and the French underground took care of me in, uh, in southern France took me through the Pyrenees I went into Spain was interned and the United States bought me back out of Spain for probably a couple thousand gallons of gasoline back to England back into the war finished up in in late spring of 45 and came back to the United States I had a high school education, but I was gifted with mechanics, and uh, there were many, many milestones back beginning in 1947 to be broken. And I was lucky enough to be at the right place at the right time and also have the capability to participate in a lot of test programs. I went to the test pilot school in 1946, was selected to fly the X-1. And the thing you have to remember, back in 1947, we had never had an airplane much above 84% of the speed of sound. And shock waves would form on the airplane and it would buffet and become uncontrollable under certain conditions. The big thing that came out of the whole X-1 program, and it took me 92 days to get the airplane above Mach 1, was that we had to develop a flying tail on the back of the X-1 to control it through Mach 1. And that's the reason today, if you look at F-16s, F-15s, F-18s, and F-22s, all of these airplanes have slab tails. And uh, we learned that in 1947. It, it took the, the Soviet Union and the English and the, Fr and the French five years to find out that little trick. Uh, I've enjoyed working at Edwards for almost 36 years of my career. I was, today, airplanes are platforms. The, old, the days of dogfighting and pulling high G's like we did in World War II and in Vietnam 
is sort of the thing of the past. And if you, those of you who watch television today and watch a lot of my buddies in the Air Force and the Marine Corps and the Navy and over in Iraq see that everything is done with standoff weapon system. And basically that's the way it is. We, I was instrumental in developing the computer flight control systems for the F-16 and all of the follow-on fighters. I was involved in stealth technology, uh, infrared zooming, AMRAM families and the like. And it was very interesting to me. Now, you, I'm sure, like a lot of the student test pilots that, that I fly with at Edwards and a test pilot school, say, what's left for me? You know, and what you've done here at this meeting, some of you, you know, what you're doing today is a good example of what you have to do the rest of your life. And that is use high technology to do the pro or solve the problems that you have. And it's wonderful that all of these hard, all of this hardware that you develop, yeah, I, I really get charged out of seeing these things. So, man, it's too bad they won't let you hang bombs on them and blow the other guy up, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> Anyway, it's, it's a privilege to be here, and I want to congratulate all of you for getting into high, the hot high-tech world, because it's interesting. Uh, you, your whole life, will see this technology escalate, just like I have done. And uh, it's most, most interesting. I can only wish you good luck. And you know, most all of you gals and guys, if you want to and get in the Air Force and be a fighter pilot, man, come and talk to me. We, good luck in your life. Thank you so much, General Yeager. We really appreciate it.